Christian Chapman is the star quarterback for San Diego State's football team. He no longer has Donnell Pumphrey, but he still has Rashad Penny. He no longer has Nico Saragusa and that offensive line last year. In fact, he's got four new starters. He's got two new starting receivers that are both redshirt freshmen. Christian Chapman in San Diego State getting ready to host UC Davis on Saturday plus the Sky Show. Here he is back on Scott and BR on the Corky's Hotline. Hi, Christian. Hey, how you doing? What's up, dude? How you doing? Doing good. I'm excited, man. The time's upon us. All right. Yeah, it's really football season. So before we talk football, hold on a second. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Got to relax a little bit. I am told that you, like me and Coach Long, share a passion for the television show Game of Thrones. Is this true or false? Huge fan. A bunch of us on the team are. You guys have, like, viewing parties on Sunday nights? Yeah, a few of us do. And then the next day, that's all we're talking about. Mm-hmm. We're coming up with theories and whatnot, and we're loving it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you feel like you have to watch the episode more than once to really, really get it? Like, I always watch it Sunday night, and then I start Monday morning with a review. How about you? I watch it, and if I have any questions about it, I, they have, like, a little after the show thing where the director, I believe, and the producer talk about the show and certain things. So I'll listen to that a little bit if I don't understand some stuff or just talk to a friend. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Now, are you a Game of Thrones guy from the beginning? Did you binge watch to catch up? How did you you get into it? Uh, I'm not from the beginning. I started probably about a year and a half ago. Just kind of heard of it. Um, Got into it, and once I started, I could not stop watching it. Got hooked on it, and I've been a fan ever since. How many guys on the team are, like you, hooked on the Game of Thrones? I'll, I'll say probably half of them. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, and do you have conversation with Coach Long about the show like I do every week? <laughs> right. I haven't got in-depth conversation with him. I've heard some of the things he said. I um, was with you guys the last time. What he said, what, if we had a dragon on our team. But, uh, no, nothing, nothing too depth. What did you think when Jon Snow – shows up at Daenerys Targaryen's door, winds up going into her room, making very passionate love to her, Christian Chapman. Uh, All the while, we're finding out that he's actually the rightful holder to the throne. It's not her. In fact, she's his aunt, and she should be bending the knee to him. It's crazy. I mean, we've seen worse, though. Uh, You got the Lannisters, the brother and sister. They got their little love affair, so I don't think it's too bad what they're doing, but I think it's crazy. I think there's going to be a little little power team now that they're together. I think Jon Snow should get his own dragon. Oh, yeah. He's definitely riding his own dragon. He's riding that second dragon for sure. Right, because remember the one scene where the dragon lands and he comes up to Jon Snow and Jon Snow pets him, gives him a little love? I think Jon Snow's going to ride his own dragon. Exactly. And they're going to go into battle and the Night King's going to have his own dragon. This going to be crazy. Wait, wait. You, you broke up for a second. The Night King's going to what? He has his own dragon, too. Oh, it's so they're true. gonna be in. They're gonna be in the air battling. Yeah, it's it's gonna turn into an air war. You know, I mean, it used to just be ground troops. Now it's gonna be an air war. Yep, <laughs> you understand. Christian Chapman is the starting quarterback at San Diego State. He's also a very solid man when it comes to Game of Thrones. He no knows doubt. his stuff. <laughs> no doubt about he that. He really knows his stuff. Is there anything <laughs> before we move on to San Diego State football? Is there anything else Game of Thrones related that you just feel like, hey, I've got the platform right now. I'd like to just just bring out one more thing or one more storyline or one more character, any, anything else? Yeah, I got a little theory. A theory? A theory. So this is what I think. I think the three-eyed raven is part of the dark, dark night. They have something going on to, like in their minds. That's why the White Walkers moved to the tree first. Then when Bronn went south, they went south towards him too. So they're actually following Bronn. And somehow Bronn is related with the dark knight. Okay, wait a second. So you think the the Stark brother, the Bran, par- yeah. Bran, the paralyzed kid, who can he's the three eyed raven. Mm-hmm. You think that he is actually somehow in cahoots with with the, the army of the dead and, and the Night yep. King. Yep, they have something going on because first the Night King went to that tree where they're all hiding at, mm-hmm. and then now he's going south to where he is now. So I think there is something there. God, I hope Arya kills Bran now. <laughs> Don't you, dude? Oh, no, it's her brother. Huh? Yeah, but if, if if the brother is bringing the Night King to you know, to Winterfell, I mean, oh, yeah. sc- screw him. He yeah. got to go. <laughs> he got to do, do something about it. Right. Does, does this happen in the locker room? Do you guys have these these conversations? 
Oh yeah, I've heard some crazy theories. And yeah, we we always <laughs> yeah we, we say some things that we think is gonna happen. Christian, oh, last my. thing, perhaps you could work on my partner here, Billy Ray. You know, Billy Ray refuses to watch Game of Thrones, and and I've been working on him now for years to please catch up. You know, Billy Ray and I used to watch The Bachelor together, and that was kind of fun. We'd have that to talk about. I cannot get Billy Ray to watch any show other than Channel 10 News or NFL Football. Right. Would you try and sell Billy Ray, Christian Chapman, star quarterback <laughs> at San Diego State, on why he should catch up? I mean, there's some guys on the team like that, too. This is a show you just can't jump into season three or season four. To really appreciate it, you got to start in front of the beginning. And once you get going, you're going to get hooked. You're going to start knowing what the plot is and all the characters and all the twists and turns of the show, and you're really going to get into it. And I think you'll start liking it by season two. Come on, Billy Ray. I'm done. God, you're such a liar. <laughs> no, I'm, such I'm, a liar. I'm in. You are not in. You're I so far in. from in. You're so out. You have no idea how in such I am. <laughs> telling me for years he's in. <laughs> Christian Chapman, let's talk San Diego State football. What do you say, bud? All right. Do it. Uh-huh. So Christian Chapman is the starting quarterback at San Diego State. He's got two Mountain West Conference titles under his belt. How do you feel going into this year's team in comparison to when you first played two seasons ago as a freshman? I'm so confident. Uh, I feel like going in there, I know what to expect. I've been there before. I have a lot of games under my belt, and you know I'm just full of confidence, and I kind of just want to bestow that on to the younger guys now. When they go in there, just be calm and confident and just play ball. And, and how do you instill that? Aside from being calm and confident, what what is your leadership secret to, to do that? First, it's kind of preparation, you know, making sure everyone's on the same track. Nice. I think half of it's knowing what you got to do. So if these guys know what they got to do and they're on the same track with you, with the receivers, the kind of linemen, what we're looking for, then I think you just, second nature, you just do what you do and play ball from there. Yeah, we're talking to Christian Chapman, the starting quarterback at San Diego State. You know, you say that. But Rocky was on the other day, and, and, you know, listen, unless he's playing coy, his biggest concern is, obviously, you got four new starters on the offensive line. you got two new starting wide receivers that are both redshirt freshmen. So let's just talk about those two positions right now. What do you think about your revamped O-line? I'm excited to see them in action. Uh, I've seen them grow. I've seen some steps we've made from the beginning of fall camp to now. And now I just want to see him in live action uh, against a real team, a team outside of what we've been going against the whole time. And I think that would be a true telling point of uh, what they're all about, especially the young receivers, too. I'm um, going against some real real opponents instead of the same guy you've been going against for a month straight. So, you know, yeah, I'm just excited to see what they, they're all about. Yeah, let, let's hear what you think of these two redshirt freshmen starting wide receivers. I mean, first of all, just to get the start and be at the top of the depth chart, they've had to climb over some guys, Christian, that have been there and are experienced. So tell us how these two redshirt freshmen became the starters. Um, first, they, I mean, when they ask you to step in, if anything happens, a guy goes down or anything, you get your opportunity, and they've made the most of their opportunity. Um, Tim and Macklin, they've both progressed so much since the first year. They've matured a lot. They've taken a better in-depth into the playbook, knowing what they got to do. And they're physical beasts. I mean, both of them are huge receivers. I can throw the ball up to them on a fade ball. They can bring it down, and they're big guys. So it's kind of good to have those weapons on your team now. we got a we got big threats. All right. So you, you, you're looking forward to seeing this offensive line perform, and, uh, and, and now you're excited about these two taller, starting, young kid wide receivers. You know what you got in Rashad Penny. As Coach Long keeps warning us, it's going to be a while before this team is as good as he thinks it can be. What are you expecting with all these new faces in the first game? Uh, I think the first play, it's going to be a little closer to the point, a little bit probably. They're going to be, it's new to them. I mean, it's their first actual start for most of these guys. So I think it's going to take a little bit of time to you know, settle in, probably a couple drives where they're actually just playing ball and just going in there and just doing what they got to do. But they're going to be a little, a little shocked when they go in there. I know that. I know I was when I first got in, but... Once we settle in, I just let them know, hey, calm down, guys. Let's go. That's what we've been doing. We've been doing this for months now. We know the game plan. Let's, let's just do it. Yeah, I'm so glad to hear you say that. We're talking to Christian Chapman, the starting quarterback at San Diego State, because, dude, they should be listening to you. You're the guy oh, yeah. who, who got thrown into the action your freshman year against Cal um, when I'm sure you really weren't expecting to play very much, as I recall. And it wasn't a terribly successful uh, outing for you. Um, but that's okay because you wound up coming back later in the year when the team really needed you and you had some experience under your belt. I and mean, these guys should be listening to every word you're saying. 
yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm taking it upon myself. Kind of, so I'm in that leadership right now. I'm not the young guy anymore. I'm the mature guy that's been through it, been through the ringer, had two seasons in a row, and just been going through it. And now I kind of just want to, you know, lead these guys in the right direction, let them know you just go in there, man. You might have a little jitters, but just got to play ball. We've been doing this since high school. It's what we live for. That's right on. Christian Chapman, the starting quarterback at San Diego State on Scott and BR on the Mighty 1090. What is your leadership style? I mean, would, would you grab a, a face mask? Uh, I mean, will you, call, you call out a guy that that isn't isn't working out in the uh, – in the meeting room, or what is your, your leadership style? I'm a lead by example type of guy. You know, I'm always doing the right thing, I believe. But if any, I, I'll only say something if I see something really going like too many times getting out of the way. Like if you consistently are messing up a play, mm-hmm. consistently running the wrong route, then I'm going to have to get on you. First time, uh, I'm not going to be on you. I'm like, come on, just got to get into it. You should know it now. But if the second, third time comes around, then I'm going to be on you. So I'm more lead by example, positive guy. But if I need to say something, I'll say something. All right. Works. What about on the defensive side? Coach Long was telling us earlier this week that where he's really concerned is the two safety positions are true freshmen. So these are guys that a year ago were playing high school football. One kid from St. Augustine High, and I don't remember where Coach said the other guy was from. I think he said he was from the Inland Empire. But two starting true freshman safeties. You've lined up across from them. Are these two kids in your mind, are they ready to go? They got a lot of potential. I say that. Um, I know not right from the get go they're gonna be, you know, those shut down guys. They might get beat here and there, but they have a lot of potential. I think they could be good guys down the road. Just like on offense, you know, it's gonna take a little few or probably a few drives for these guys to settle in, but you know, I think they'll be good. Uh, I've seen a lot from them. They're they're good at press. They're kinda of getting the uh defenses down. But, you know, same with them. I'm excited to see what they're all about. This whole team, man, we're young. I'm just excited to see what everyone's about. Yeah, I think we're all pretty excited. Mm -hmm, No doubt. Now, I think I heard, tell me if I'm wrong, Christian Chapman, that during the Aztec scrimmage and Fan Fest, guys on the team were looking around the stadium going, where is everybody? Because you guys have been promoting, hey, one city, one team, Chargers bailed, where are your team? Like, where is everybody? Was it true that you guys were kind of a little bit pissed that there was nobody there? I mean, I, I don't really have big expectations for myself of a lot of fans showing up to that. I know probably a couple guys were saying stuff that kind of they, they expected probably a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, I don't expect more. I, I'm I'm more excited for this first game and the turnout then. So that's when it really matters, you know, a uh, little fall camp game, a scrimmage or whatever. It doesn't mean much. It's these, these couple games, and I think the more we win, the more we keep going, the more fans are going to show up. So we just got to prove it, prove it to the city. Yeah, UC Davis – and nobody cares about UC Davis. You know that. I mean, you're a kid from here. You get it. It's a tune-up game, and, and hopefully you guys go out and perform like it's a tune-up game because we've seen San Diego State lose tune-up games. And by the way, we've seen Michigan lose in the big house tune-up games and other uh-huh. big-time programs lose to much smaller programs. Uh, but there should be a really big crowd for this game on Saturday night because of the Sky Show. So hopefully you guys get a great home field advantage and the team comes out and is hyped. You guys do what you got to do to tune up because – Back-to-back at Arizona State and then home against Stanford. These are three weeks of huge opportunities to take control of this town. You know that. Yep, I do. And I love because Chris Warren said to us, the fireworks show ain't after the first game. It's going to be during that game because we're going to try to light up that scoreboard and start the season off with a bang. Boy, I nice. love to hear that. That's perfect. You got anything for us on the UC Davis defense and what kind of a threat they may pose to the San Diego State offense? I mean, it's tough. We don't have much film on them. I know they have a whole new coaching staff. I believe he's come from a JUCO. So we're looking at um, their JUCO film. Um, not sure the personnel that's going to be starting for them because of the whole new staff. But uh, I'm thinking uh, from teams I've seen in the past and what they run, we're going to get some man. They're going to bring some guys down in the box for usual and try to stack it a little bit, stop the running game. But uh, we're ready this year. we got some weapons to go deep if they want to try to do that on us. All right, well, let's see what happens. Come up this Saturday, San Diego State against UC Davis, Qualcomm Stadium. Well, wait a second. The stadium formerly known as Qualcomm. <laughs> the Sky Show and uh, Christian Chapman getting ready to go with his junior year. Hey, Christian, it's great to talk to you always, man. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank hey, you dude, guys. hey, who's Carlsbad got Friday night? I don't, I don't know who they got Friday. I need to talk to Coach Mack, but I know they won last week 49-0. to Big big win. Mm-hmm. You're gonna so. make you gonna make it out to any school, any of your games. You know, it's always cool when you show up at your high school football oh, game wearing your college Letterman jacket, right? 
Oh, yeah. Every bye week I get the opportunity to go up there. I go there all the time. Yeah. All right, cool, man. Christian, great to talk to you, bud. All right, guys. Have a good night.